Welcome back. There's been major changes since last time you saw me. Sunday night, armed with rum and a cigar, I was gonna do some cleaning in my shelves here. I quickly found that boring and I just sat down and enjoyed the rum and the cigar. But I started thinking and I realized something, something I should have realized a long time ago. And that's what we're working on now. But I'll explain why and what and stuff later. Now I've got a bunch of machining to do. Usually you don't see much of the machining I do on this channel and that's because it's really hard to film inside a mill. First of all, it's enclosed in a small box. It's difficult to get a camera in here. Second, my flood coolant eats plastic. It's eaten two GoPro cases and a GoPro so far. Third, it's hard for the camera to pick up anything through the doors here. Reason number four, there's a lot of great CNC machining channels out there with much better info and knowledge than I, what I can provide. I'll quickly run you through the operations and the feeds and speeds and stuff of me machining this part though. First up is probing to get my work zero. Now all three axes of the machine are set to the same zero point as in the software. You can start machining. First operation is facing and then I run adaptive clearing to clear most of the material. I'm running my spindle maxed out about 5500 rpm, feeding at 1500 millimeters a second. That's as fast as I can go without fear of losing steps. I thought it was odd it didn't engage the part until the second pass there. Turns out I've cut my stock 10 mm short in this axis. Which is really annoying because this was my last piece that was big enough to do this in one, one piece. Okay, let's try that again. I borrowed this from a friend. I think I can squeeze one piece in there. It's a little short here, but that's in a non-crucial place. Or so I hope. Adaptive clearing is done. Now this internal feature has a 0.3 millimeter stepped surface finish. And now I'm gonna clean that up with a ball end mill. Small one. Still the same feeds and speeds. The reason is that's my machine maxed out and uh, it's still too slow. This ball end mill operation is called scallop infusion and it does a beautiful job except when it's done doing the beautiful continuous run it randomly stabs the parts in places like to add a creative touch or something i'm not sure why that happens i can't find a setting like do not add creative touch at the end with the random nicks so uh i've gotta, gotta do some research New cylinder. I'll explain why, what's going on. Later, now I need to drill some holes. I want to glue this up so I can press in the liner tomorrow. It's happened again. I was supposed to do some cleaning and uh, I got caught up watching a movie. Taxi driver. Hey there, Alex. You're not watching Taxi Driver. That's not available in Norway, you say. Well, actually, watch this. 
You're absolutely right about taxi driver not being available in Norway. I've got to trick up my sleeve. Just like that. Taxi driver and a bunch of other stuff that aren't available in Norway is available to me. Works on my Android phone too and iOS for that matter. I'm from Salt Lake City now. NordVPN isn't just for gaining access to stuff you're not supposed to gain access to though. Keeps you secure by encrypting your data, creating a tunnel for you to travel in on the internet so no one can spy on you and steal your stuff like credit card numbers and stuff like that. NordVPN is the fastest VPN on the market, which means you won't notice any difference from not using it. You can use it on six devices, even your smart TV. NordVPN now features threat protection, which helps you avoid malicious websites, protects you from malware, blocks tracking cookies, blocks intrusive ads and pop-ups, and more. Head to nordvpn.com slash stuffing for an exclusive deal. It's risk-free thanks to their 30-day money-back guarantee. Thank you, NordVPN. Back to cleaning the garage now. four microns above nominal dimension. I'd say that's within tolerance. Things escalated quickly. It's a week later now. I was going to organize some stuff and clean up the place last Sunday. And look at it now. <laughs> I'll clear the table and tell you what's going on here. Last time we broke a pair of the reed pedals. We also discovered that the fuel will make them softer over time. It doesn't happen fast though. I did some testing submerging them in a container of fuel and uh, after several hours there was no difference. I bought some new reed valves. I actually thought these were packs of four. But they're actually one in each pack, which means if you buy four of them for one block, it's more expensive to buy these than to buy a complete new block. Kind of weird. The texture is different. I can feel the fibers in the used reed valves versus the new one. It makes me think the fuel is leaching out part of the resin and making them weaker. Even though in air they stiffen up in just a few minutes, like we discovered last time. Upon closer inspection, there's damage to most of the reed pedals from this block and probably to this one too. More concerning though is one of the bridges have broken. We were also struggling with spark, I think. That should be fixed now, I'll show you. Hollandaren kindly offered to lend me one of his MSD8232 coils. This is a really hot one. At that time, a week ago, I didn't know all this other stuff would go on. I went and bought this while waiting for this. Don't let the sticker fool you. This is actually more powerful than this one. American muscle car, people. <laughs> this is the old one I've been using. This is much more powerful than this and uh, this is like four times more powerful than this one. I haven't got a plug that fits though. We'll try this one first. Well, and then also lent me his four output Ignitech unit which means we can either plug four outputs into one coil or we can run four spark plugs simultaneously. Remember that head I showed you. Brute four cylinder, a pair of huge transfer ports, almost as high as the exhaust port, and two huge exhaust ports. Reed valves on each side. And a rotary exhaust valve to block the port. Brute four cylinder revision two. 
Now with four symmetrical transfer ports at normal height and four symmetrical exhaust ports at normal height. Twin exhaust outlets, twin inlets, no reed valves and no rotary valve. We've got some pipes though. Last Sunday while sitting here procrastinating, it dawned on me. A good pipe, this is probably not a good pipe. A good pipe will create like two, three bars of back pressure before the exhaust port closes. I actually knew this. I've been so hung up on my rotary valve blocking the port. I haven't really thought about it. Has to mean more power. We'll sacrifice the super wide power band we've been seeing with the rotary valve though. The rotary valve and blower combo seems like a great thing for super wide power bands. But that's not really important for me. I want peak power. Pipes. With two exhaust ducts and twin pipes, I have lots of blowdown area for spent gases to escape before the transfers open. I think I've got all the parts ready. I've spent the whole week designing and machining parts. These are the transfers. I actually tried 3D printing them again. Thought I would give that a go. My printer started losing steps in the y-axis. I think it's the stepper motor overheating. The flow path isn't exactly ideal here, but it's just a prototype. We'll make something better if this works good. Assemble. I'm measuring 0.3 millimeter squish. That's too tight. I'll have to add another gasket. Between 0.4 and 0.5. That's good. Need to upgrade my exhaust extraction system. To make things easier for myself, I think I run them upswept like this. And then I can use this as the inlet for my exhaust extraction. Water is heating up, we'll soon be ready for a test fire. This is the reason the video was delayed. I wanted to finish it and start it within this video. Couple of points. I've designed this cylinder so that I can fit rotary valves, two of them, if needs be. I've cut off the stingers of the pipes, they're 15 mm ID, which should give me about the same area as a single stinger of 20 mm. I didn't want to keep them long in case that's too small 20 millimeter could be too small if this is a complete failure we can just put on the old cylinder or make a new one with a different design only takes a week It runs, my new exhaust extraction is creating a huge oily mess on the floor. Took it really easy, it's a new cylinder. I also turned down the ignition timing to 15 degrees before top dead center. I think we'll have to add in a bunch of timing around 9000 RPM. Seemed like that's where it didn't want to rev anymore. Like right before it enters the power band. 
Great dealing with pipes again. I'm more used to what kind of ignition advance I need to run with a pipe. Stay tuned for next time when proper testing will commence. See you next time.